Hey everyone, Sam here from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these cute, spooky witch cauldron brownie bites. These Halloween brownie bites are so simple to make. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make them completely from scratch, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you'll need a large bowl, and we are going to add 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter to this bowl. Because we're about to heat this up in the microwave, I like to cut my butter into tablespoon-sized pieces. That way it heats faster and more evenly. So add the butter to your large bowl. Next, we'll add a half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips to our bowl. Now we will take our butter and chocolate over to the microwave and we'll heat it for about 30 seconds and stir it really well afterwards. Then continue to heat this mixture for about 15 second increments, stirring really well after each one until the chocolate and butter are completely melted and the mixture is smooth. Take care to not overheat this mixture. With our butter and our chocolate melted, now we will add a half cup of natural cocoa powder and I also like to add a half teaspoon of instant coffee grounds. This is totally optional, but I find that it really helps bring out that rich chocolatey taste. It's not going to make your brownie bites taste like coffee, but I just like the extra flavor it adds. Now we'll stir everything together until your mixture is smooth. We'll add one cup of tightly packed light brown sugar. I know a lot of brownie recipes just use regular white granulated sugar, but I found that using Brown sugar actually helps give these brownies a nice, rich, moist flavor. So we'll add that to our mixture. And now we'll add just a half cup of white granulated sugar. You'll want to stir this together really well until the sugar is completely combined. Now we will add our eggs. This recipe calls for two large eggs and one large egg yolk. That extra yolk is going to also help make these brownie bites nice and chewy. We'll add these one at a time, stirring really well after each addition. Stir in a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and now we will set this aside and we can prepare our dry ingredients. You will need a separate bowl and you're going to want to add one cup plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour to this bowl. Add a half teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of salt to your flour, and we'll just stir this together until everything's nicely combined. Now you'll want to bring back your wet ingredients and you'll just add your dry ingredients to the bowl and stir everything together until it's completely combined. You should have a nice, thick, glossy brownie batter. Now our brownie batter is ready to bake, so what you're going to need is a 24 count mini muffin or mini cupcake tin. We are going to grease this. Now you can grease and flour each cavity of the muffin tin. What I like to use is a baking spray, and I'll just spray the pan, and I'll use a paper towel to make sure the cavity is well greased. Now, if you use a spray, make sure it's a baking spray. It should contain flour in the ingredients. A regular cooking spray that's just canola or vegetable oil is not going to work. Your brownie bites will stick to the muffin tin. You don't want that, so make sure if you use a spray, it's baking spray. To portion our brownie bites, you're going to want to drop one and a half tablespoons of batter into each cavity. This brownie batter actually makes enough for about 28 to 30 brownie bites. So you'll either need a second muffin tin or you'll need to wait for the first 24 to finish baking and cooling before baking the rest. Whatever you do, do not add extra batter to your first 24. You don't want them to overflow the muffin cavities. Now we can bake our brownie bites in our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and these will need to bake for about 18 minutes. Once our brownies are finished baking, we are going to need to indent them with a rounded teaspoon while they're still warm. So within about a minute of them coming out of the oven, you'll want to grab a rounded teaspoon like I have here, or in my case, this is a rounded half tablespoon, and we are going to gently press into each brownie bite to make a well. This is going to be the basin for our witch's cauldrons. Make sure you do this while the brownies are still warm Otherwise, they won't shape as nicely. You'll want to let these brownie bites cool completely before you fill them with any frosting, but while they cool, we can go ahead and prepare our frosting. I like to make a cream cheese frosting for these witch cauldron brownie bites just because I think it's not too sweet, it's a good flavor, it really complements the brownie. But if you have a preferred frosting that you like, you can certainly use that instead. I even have a vanilla buttercream frosting you can use if you prefer that, and I'll link to that in the description below. To make this cream cheese frosting, you're going to need an eight ounce brick of cream cheese and a half cup of salted butter. You want both of these to be softened about to room temperature, so I like to let mine sit out for about an hour or so before I even start making the brownie bites. We'll add these to a large bowl. We'll use an electric mixer to beat these together until they're nice and creamy. 
and we'll stir in a teaspoon of vanilla extract for a really good flavor. Now we'll add our powdered sugar. You'll need about three cups of powdered sugar for this recipe, and we'll gradually add that to our butter mixture, stirring until it's completely combined and well incorporated. And you will wanna use the spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl just to make sure everything gets well incorporated. Now comes the fun part, and you get to decide what color you want your witch cauldrons to be. I like to use two colors, so what I'm going to do is I'll take my frosting and I'll divide it into two bowls. And it doesn't need to be exact, I just like to make sure I've got about half in each bowl. We'll color each of these bowls whatever color you prefer. I'm going to be using green and purple. I found that using gel food coloring gives me the most vibrant color, and so that's what I'll be using today. For the purple, I just have a regal purple. This is a Maricolor. And for the green, I'm going to be using mint green. And to make it a little more neon, I'll be adding just a drop of lemon yellow. So I'll just add my green food coloring. Like I said, I'll just do a small drop of yellow. And we'll just stir everything together until well combined. All right, I think that color looks sufficiently spooky. So now I'll just mix up my purple and make sure, of course, that you don't use the same beater or if you need to, make sure you clean them first. I found I usually need a lot of purple. Otherwise, it comes out a little bit gray. And I'll just mix this one up by hand. With our frostings prepared, I wanna to talk to you real quickly about the sprinkles we'll be using. These sprinkles are going to be what make the cauldrons look like they're all bubbling and crazy and what really makes them fun. Now, I use a variety of sprinkles because I'm a sprinkle addict and have a ton. I get most of mine online from Country Kitchen. I think the website's countrykitchenusa.com, but you do not need to go out and order fancy sprinkles for this recipe. You can just use whatever you have on hand. I do, however, recommend sticking to a color scheme using round sugar pearls if you have them. And I think that these candy eyeballs, uh, these are made by Wilton. I think these really help make the cauldrons nice and cute. It looks like there's, I don't know, an eye of new in the cauldron. So I really recommend getting these if you can. And these I actually got from Walmart. I bet your local cake store has it or your local grocery store. So definitely get these, they're really fun. So I've gone ahead and I have put my colored frosting into a piping bag and I'm just going to snip off the end. But if you don't have piping bags, you can put your frosting in a Ziploc bag and snip off a corner and pipe it into the brownie bites that way, or you can even just use a spoon and spoon it into the brownie bites. I'm going to overfill each cauldron just a little bit. Because remember, we want these to look like they're bubbling over. And now we will add our sprinkles. You can just drop these evenly over the brownie bites. The sprinkles should stick to the frosting, but I like to strategically place mine just to make sure they look how I want them to. Mostly I'll place the larger sugar pearls and the eyeballs, and then I'll drop the quins and smaller pieces on. And that is how you make these super cute, kind of creepy, witch cauldron brownie bites. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you next time.